Hey everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Jim Sonis of FanDuel, who's here to take a final crack at week three. We're building some stacks to win us some money. What's going on, Jim? I'm pretty excited, Greg. This is a fun slate. We got two big games to stack out west, and I think both are pretty intriguing, so why deviate when we don't have to? Let's just stick out there and stack those two games and just kind of ignore everything else. Well, we really talked about it on Monday that the Russell Wilson, Tyler Lockett stack is just like an autofill that you don't think about. You just write it down and then we move on. Uh, so let's do that part of the show before we move on. Uh, let's write in Russell Wilson. We'll write in Tyler Lockett and, and then we'll get to everything else. So yeah, here we are. Yeah, it's kind of a no-brainer. Let's not overcomplicate things here, Greg. And I think the one dilemma you could have is do you go Tyler Lockett or DK Metcalf? But I think a lot of people in that decision are probably going to go Metcalf. Metcalf has the lower salary on FanDuel. He just obliterated Stefan freaking Gilmore on Sunday Night Football on national television. So I would expect people to go into DK Metcalf, and I can't blame them. DK Metcalf is a very good football player. So Metcalf, straight up, might be the better option. But I do think that Lockett is fun if we can get some leverage here off of the Russ and Metcalf stacks because Lockett has been good too. He has 27% of the team's targets through the thir first two games. He has 31% of the air yards, and it's not like he's been bad. He just hasn't been as good as DK Metcalf. So I think Metcalf or Lockett is a really fun option here. He is $6,800. He is surrounded by some pretty fun wide receivers. Amari Cooper is there. Allen Robinson is there. Keenan Allen is there. So maybe that will draw away a bit from Tyler Lockett. I don't think he's going to be under the radar by any means. You're not going to get Tyler Lockett at like 10% uh, roster rate or anything like that, but he should be lower or less popular than, than Metcalf. And I think that's a good spot to jump off and get Tyler Lockett in your lineups. Big upside for him. Really good floor as well. And it's a game that I just want to stack every single way I can. It's interesting, right? You're going with the higher price player because we think he's going to be less owned here than DK Metcalf and Metcalf who certainly was a star-making performance last weekend for him against Stephon Gilmore, which was just ridiculous, and he's cheaper. Everybody's going to be on that calf here this week. So let's make a little bit of a turn, go with Lockett, who's uh, just as consistent, just as awesome, and with Russell Wilson throwing the ball and, and cooking clearly, well, I think it's a stack you have to go with or have to consider going with here on Sunday. As Jim alluded to, the other West Coast late game that you got to make sure you're targeting here is Arizona and Detroit. Let's start on the Arizona side, where Kyler Murray and Cliff Kingsbury and this Arizona offense is 2-0, and and they haven't exactly faced the easiest of defenses. But now you're facing Detroit. It's going to be able to breathe a little bit more. You have Kyler Murray. You have Kenyon Drake. And this offense is ready to cook, if you will. Yeah, and I think the good thing here is that Kenny and Drake makes it more affordable to stack Kyler Murray and DeAndre Hopkins. So I think that you go with all three, honestly. You can very easily do so. But if you go with Kenny and Drake, who is $6,500, as you said, you're giving yourself flexibility to get to Hopkins. And honestly, Hopkins isn't that hard to get to to begin with, so you may not need that flexibility. But if you pair these three guys together, if this game blows up, you're probably going to be in a really good position. And the odds this game blows up, Pretty freaking good based on the total for this one. Drake's role so far has been a little bit middling. He has lost some passing down work to Chase Edmonds, but he's also faced two really tough defensive lines. And the Lions very much are not that. We saw Aaron Jones obliterate them last week. We saw Jones get uh, a lot of production via the passing game as well. And Kenyon Drake in the past has shown that is within his arsenal. So he did run fewer routes last week than Chase Edmonds. I think that is a legitimate thing to note. I wouldn't say it's a concern yet. It is a thing to note for sure. But despite that, Drake has still gotten good volume. He now goes into a good matchup. He's paired with an offense that finally gets to face a defense that's not one of the best defensive lines in all of football. And I think they're in a, a good spot to erupt in week number three. So yes, you want to pair Kyler Murray with DeAndre Hopkins. But if you go with Kenyon Drake as well, you're going to get like 150% of the yards from this team if you combine uh, Murray, Hopkins, and Drake. And I think that's always pretty intriguing. You should get every touchdown too, unless Edmonds gets one himself. So honestly, I think you just go all three. But I think that Kenyon Drake, with that salary being as low as it is, makes it easy to jam in Hopkins. And that's something that I want to do pretty often on Sunday. Yeah, Drake and Hopkins combined with Kenny and Drake. Like you said, 150% of the offense in the yards are going to come from those three players uh, with Arizona here. Finally facing a defense, they're going to be able, able to really dominate. And um, 
I've read a lot in season long that Kenny and Drake is a perfect buy low opportunity. I think that absolutely exists. And we're going to see that window close very, very soon because this Sunday against the Lions, I think Kenny Drake is a really strong game. So I like this Arizona stack uh, really just as much as I do Seattle. And now the stack that may not be nearly as fun, but maybe as productive is with the Detroit Lions, the other side of that Cardinals game, where you have Matthew Stafford, not sure the availability on Kenny Galladay yet, but Marvin Jones is the wide receiver that you're pairing with Matthew Stafford here. You have Stafford at $7,300. You have Marvin Jones at $6,100. Why is this a combination that you're looking at that's a little bit unique? I think it's because I'm operating on the assumption that Kenny Galladay will be back because Schefter report, Adam Schefter reported on Monday that Galladay would return. Sounded like he was pretty close to playing last week. And I always feel better about having confidence in players when I know ahead of time that they're going to play. And it sounds like we had that with Galladay, despite the limited practices on Wednesday and Thursday, I'm expecting pretty much a full go here. That's a good thing for this entire offense. Last year, the Detroit lions played six games where Stafford and all three of their top receivers were fully healthy. And in those six games, Stafford uh, was one of the most efficient quarterbacks in all of football. He threw deep about 26% of the time, which is just a massive number. We've seen them go back to that this year so far. We have not seen the efficiency, but now you bring Kenny Galladay back into the fold. I would expect this offense to be much better, and that benefits everyone, including Marvin Jones. You look back to last year when Galladay was healthy, playing alongside Jones and Matthew Stafford, we didn't see Jones get as much deep volume as Kenny Galladay. But he got a lot of work in the red zone. He had more than 30% of the red zone targets. And Jones, despite not getting the deep work, was very effective. He actually had 100 or more yards in two of the six games they played with all three or all four of these guys being healthy. And in another game, he had 93 yards and four touchdowns. So Marvin Jones has upside when this offense is working well. I expect it to work better when Kenny Galladay is back, which I expect to happen on Sunday. So Jones is $6,100. Hasn't done very much so far this year, but I expect this offense to get better with Kenny Galladay being back, and that benefits Stafford. It benefits Marvin Jones. It benefits Galladay himself. So I would say just load up on the Lions, but I think this is a good time to get in on Marvin Jones because Kenny Galladay does make this entire offense that much better. I think the common thought or belief would be, hey, Kenny Galladay's back. Marvin Jones is going to take a back seat, but that's not necessarily true. Yes, he's not going to be the number one option in the offense anymore. But that's okay because you need the defense to look at somebody else. You need Patrick Peterson on the other side of the field opening up Marvin Jones to really do what he does best and be a volume-type receiver for Matthew Stafford in this Daryl Bevel-led offense. And I think Marvin Jones is sneaky but smart in this matchup here against Arizona. That's going to do it for us. That's week three. I'm ready to go, Jim. How about you? I just want to watch these afternoon games, Greg. Like, I would like I, – I, the 1 p.m. slate will be fine. It'll be fine. But I want to skip forward to the, the 4 p.m. slate and just watch those games. It's going to be a blast. I am hoping for some awesome island games on Sunday and Monday night too. So week, week three, going to be a fun one. And I am looking forward to breaking it down with you on Monday. Week three is going to be awesome, specifically Sunday night and Monday night. Capping off the, capping off the week with Lamar Jackson versus Patrick Mahomes – that's going to be ridiculous. I can tell you when it comes to the Seahawks and the Cowboys, I'll have my, my Seahawks stack and then I'll just sit like this when Dak Prescott has the ball because Dak and Ezekiel Elliott, uh, they may go nuts as well Sunday afternoon. For Jim Zanis, I am Greg Sussman. Have an awesome week. Good luck. Enjoy week three. And Jim and I will see you back here on Monday as we go over the biggest stories from this past weekend. Have a great weekend. and We'll see you next time.